All right. So let's say your geometry is, I don't know how to say, let's say out of whack, whatever you want to call it. You can rotate these edges and faces. Okay. Basically you can, um, trade places with them. So select two of them. And I think you have to go in the edge and then go to rotate edge clockwise, rotate edge counter counterclockwise. Let's go clockwise and you see it rotates. Now this is a classic example of when to use shift R. Shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R. It just repeats the major um, operation. So let's say we want to put maybe this face here, just the same thing. Rotate edge clockwise, then shift R. And that's just going to do the best it can do. Let's try maybe these two. And it just rotates your edges and faces. It just redi redirects your geometry. Rather than it going this way or that way, you see last time it just went all over the place because the geometry was redirected. All right, all right, all right. Let's look at something else here. Now, maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't. And the ear seems to be one of the best places to try to um, show you what I mean. Um, maybe the nostril or the lips, but I'll just use the ear right here. Maybe you've heard of something called creasing edges. So basically you select the edge you want, you know, so I'm going to, I'm just going to select this one edge, hit N and go to item. Then we have the edge crease. Basically this is a way to add sharpness to your mesh without adding more geometry. But since our mesh looks like this in this raw form, we're not seeing an effect. So what we need to do is add some more geometry. So let's go over here and I'm going to let you find the subsurface modifier. I have an add on enabled that brings it right up right here. Add modifier subsurface modifier. And there it is. And then I'm going to enable this cage. So now when I move this, you see things start to, make a difference. Let me turn it this way. See, it starts to sharpen up. Now you can also mark your edges as sharp as well. You can go here and see right there, mark sharp. This is just so the, um, so all other or certain modifiers and operations, it's going to ignore this or something that's going to bypass this or something. And you can just come here and hit clear seam, oh, not clear seam, clear sharp. So one thing I want you to be aware of is you see the length of this edge and this crease value goes from zero to one. So zero to one is distributed along this length. Let's say we add more to this selection. I'll just do that, that, that extra. And then it's going to average that out too. It's still going to go from zero to one. So it has to go further. Let's select these and that one. And then increase that. You see the difference right there. So from here to here or here to here, front or back, I don't know. It's going from zero to one. No matter the length of the edges you select.
Alt select inside the air and increase that. This is kind of like a way to shape things out without going and adding more geometry. Going to select those three, take that to one, then select those three, put that at about 50. Oh, not that. So that's 68. That's fine. And put that maybe at 30. Now let's go into object mode. And you see how it's made a little bit of sharpness, more sharp here, less sharp, and it's really not showing anything here. So it's giving us a little bit of a kind of a gradient. You see where it's not too good right here, probably because this distance is a lot greater. See, this is 68, this is 30, no, this is 30 right there. So yeah, you just have to play around with these. And we won't see much of a difference too much because our object is right here, it's kind of flat. It's not like this area is kind of curved or the upper part of the ear, so. Yep, you just have to get in here and check that out. What I can do is select them all and you see it averaged them out. That's what it seems like. So just take that all back to zero. Select them, make sure all that is not on there. And yep, it's not on there. And this is a good method to use if you're using the subsurface modifier. Mark sharp and edge crease. All right, since we're here, since we have the subdivision surface modifier on here, you need to be aware of the fact that the subsurface modifier and the multi-resolution modifier, they both subdivide by four. Both of these subdivide by four. So whatever your base geometry count is on this first level, it's really not going to do much. Go into object mode. It's starting off here at 4680. So 4,480 triangles. Turn that up and see now it's been multiplied by four. And now it's 25,000. 896 triangles. Now we go into edit mode. We're not going to see a difference until we apply it. So I'm just going to apply this right there, just like that. Now we go back in edit mode and you see the geometry has become a lot smaller. So this is what I mean by you have to learn to work in low poly first and foremost, because you don't want to be doing your changes with this much geometry. Let's look at it in vertex select. Look at that. that's a lot of vertices to, to try to pick around, to try to pick around with. Undo, 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 undo. And I'll just take that off. All right. So there are lots of other things you can do, of course. You can go through the edge menu here. And those are the ones that I pretty much use the most. Subdivide, rotate edges, control R, loop cuts. And the hotkey for edge crease is shift E. Mark your seam or clear your seam. This is for UV unwrapping. Mark sharp and clear sharp. And this add on edge flow. And that's about all I use in this menu. For the face. Let's see, I don't use much here. Sometimes I use tries to quads or triangulate faces. Yeah, let's see, in grid fill, here's fill and alt F. I don't use that alt F. Got shade smooth, 
shade flat right there, but nothing came up. That's fine. And then we have the UV menu. Let's see here. Okay, let me show you this real quick. So, sometimes you need to merge vertices together, okay? So if I hit G and grab and try to put it over there, it's not gonna work. Now there are two ways you can merge vertices. You can use the M key. It's gonna bring up this. So we, so we can merge vertices at center, cursor, or collapse them, or merge at the first or the last. And remember, this is one to remove double geometry. So I need to select two of them, then hit M, and then hit Merge at Center. Now, I don't know why it dropped. Hmm. Let's see. Where is this at? That's on medium point. It could be another vertice is selected. Let's see, go on a wireframe, see if we can see anything with that same color on it. So let's see, M or just center. So what, oh, my bad. M mer merge it cursor, my bad. Merge it center right there. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's time for me to get it ready to get some rest. And that is merge at center. So now we hit M and then we hit merge at center. And that's going to merge that just like that. We hit M again, we can merge at, at the 3D cursor. So we're, wherever the 3D cursor is, that's where it's going to merge to. Then you can merge at first vertice you selected, or the last one you selected. And I don't know about collapse. That seems to be the same as merge at center. And don't forget, you have these operator panels too. Maybe you want to change it or something like that. Just center, and you have the more automated way to merge vertices. So, with one vertice selected, you go right up here and hit this. This is auto merge. So, when I grab and when I get close enough, it should merge, but. So you need to hit GG to merge right there. Control Z, GG, I'm gonna merge that one up there. So just in case you need to merge geometry together, GG, just like that. GG, just like so. And this may be a way that you want to redirect geometry. All right. And Wazoo has it right here. So when you save your file, you can, don't forget you have the camera view. Save your file as or through. And also, when you save your files, you can number them. That's why this plus and minus sign is here. So I can hit the plus sign, and it says real blender head number one. Alrighty, so no matter how many copies you have, I want you to make sure you bring in at least one eye. At least the eyeball. It doesn't have to be the iris, but the eye and the head as well. So select the eye and hit slash. Yes, this is another way to hide geometry. Remember we have H, then Alt H, then Shift H, then Alt H again to bring that back. 
but when you do Alt H from Shift H, it selects everything. So Shift H, then Alt H, you see it's two things here selected. Pretty much everything is selected that's not disabled in the um, outliner. What we want to look at is just a slash. Now you see how we get this movement. You may like this, you may not like this, but there is a way to alleviate this. So when you hit slash, it's only going to make everything else disappear without the movement. Let's go to preferences. Let's go back into object mode. So now what we want to do is in order to keep it from moving, we want to go here and uncheck frame selected. So just go ahead and uncheck this one and this one, I think. Actually, let me turn that on. And let's take a look. Slash, slash. Uncheck this one. We don't need these two, I think. There we go. That's simple. Now, this is going to work wonders when you're dealing with a whole bunch of objects. Now, if you want that movement, then you can keep it. That's fine. So what you need to do is just go to one, two, three, four. Key binding slash in the search bar. Bring that down the first one and disable um, frame selected and the second one disable frame selected. And you can just leave these B. Alrighty. This is just so when you hit slash on the keyboard or slash on the numpad, it doesn't move. So let's say you're really getting in here doing something. You want to have a look at the model. You just hit slash. Then all that other stuff disappears and you write up on it. All right. All righty, back in the object mode. Now, okay, so Blender has two universal hotkeys. The space bar. And don't forget, I have dynamic context menu add-on enabled. By default, but the space bar by itself works all over Blender. Even if I go into preferences, space bar, I get something. Of course, it works in modeling. Of course, you get different options because this is edit mode. On the scope mode, this is an add on to the dynamic brush menu. Default Blender. We go into UV editing, spacebar. You get that? Of course, we're in the 3D viewport and edit mode. Texture painting, spacebar, and spacebar. Now, this we get a different set of menus. And what we saw over, well, what we saw, or what we're seeing here, is what we saw over here. Anyway, shading, space bar, and a node editor, space bar, which is just search. So you don't always have to press Shift A to bring, not as Control A, Shift A to bring in a um, search node. You can hit space bar, type it in like that, what you're looking for. We go into animation, space bar, hover. Space bar, space bar, etc. Alrighty, now we look at Blender's second universal hotkey, and that is the Quick Favorites menu, which is controlled by the Q key. As you can see, there's nothing on it. Now, I will warn you, this is kind of order sensitive. So, whatever you put in first, it's going to appear like at the top of the stack. Whatever you put in second is going to appear a second and so on and so forth. But this is not always the case. 
And the second thing is, um, hmm. Hold on, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, and the second thing is, everything cannot be added to the quick favorites menu. Okay. So first, let's just take a tour. Go into edit mode, Q key, quick favorites, sculpting, quick favorites, UV editing, quick favorites, quick favorites, of course. And this is just a workspace that I made for baking. Don't worry about it. Shading, of course, you can add nodes to here, your favorite nodes, etc., etc. All right, so what can be added to quick favorites and what can't be? Well, first, you need to understand how to add anything to quick favorites. Basically, you're going to use the right mouse button. I'm just demonstrating the right mouse button. Don't worry about the context menu or the object menu. Then after you um, find something. So let's say we want to add this, the move tool. We right click and then this will tell you whether or not something can be added to quick favorites. Right click. Right click. And no, you can't. But you can add a hotkey that you devise all your own. But remember, you need to learn Blender's hotkeys so you don't cross anything up. Let's go to the object tab, left click. Let's go move. Yep, you can add that to quick favorites. What about mirror? Interactive mirror. Yep, you can add that to quick favorites. Remember, I am right clicking over everything. Let's go to add quick favorites. Let's add the famous cube. Right click then left click mouse out and then hit Q and there we have the cube. If you want to get rid of it, just right click again and remove from quick favorites. There you go. Now there is a lot you can add. Don't get me wrong. Let's go add modifier. Right click, see if it can be added. Add to quick favorites, boom. And then there you go. Now I don't know the exact limit to how much you can add to, to the quick favorites, but I've had a significant amount. All right, get rid of that, etc. So basically you have to decide what you want to add in in all these editors and stuff like that. You just have to look and see if you can add them. Like here's one you may want to add. Um, face orientation. This is going to be in edit mode and object mode. Another one you may want to add is cavity right there. There we go. So you can't add mad caps. Believe me, I've tried. Now I could assign it a shortcut key, but I've never used this like this. Let me just mouse out of that. Can we add the renderer? Nope, can I add that? It's too much. All right, so why don't you give that a go? See if you like it. Now so select, boom. Add that to quick favorites. But you notice when I went into edit mode, nothing's there because I have to add it separately because they're two different modes, two different workspaces. And remember, what you can add to the Q key is editor sensitive. 
You know, some I've never tried to add anything over here. I wonder if that's possible. How about loop tools. What? Let me see. Really? Interesting. That's most fascinating. Hold on a second. Okay. Interesting. What about added mesh tools? Now I know you can add a lot of this stuff to quick favorites, but what about some of the stuff up here? Even though I don't use this that much, what about face inset fillet? Yep. And don't forget this add on is default blender, edit mesh tools. Mm, nice. Let's go back in the object mode. Let me just see something real quick. Nope, can't add it like that. Okay. That is quick favorites. But let's look at sculpting. What can we add into sculpting? Now, I'm not going to do any sculpting, but let's just see. Now, you can add brushes, you can add other things as well. It's pretty much the same thing. You can add your mirror, your symmetry right there. Um, can we add Dentapo? Nah, can't, can't add it like that. What about remesh? Nope. You just, you just need to give these real, um, shortcuts that you assigned and they, and the blender foundation did clear up a lot of, um, hotkeys and sculpt mode. So there's a lot of hotkeys that's free for you to, you know, create your own hotkeys and stuff like that. Mask, invert mask. Yep, you're gonna add that. Yep. Now I'm just doing this randomly. A lot of the, the stuff I don't use. This is just to show you how much fun you can get out of this and what you can and can't add. Let me go back and see if I can add on faces only. Uh, I thought I can add that. Oh well. Maybe I had it somewhere else at one time or another. Nope. Stroke. Stabilize stroke. Uh, nope. Let's select the brush. Draw. And a slide relax. Nice. So now when we take a look at our quick favorites. And that's the order. You see how it offsets some things offset. So the brushes are going to be in a kind of like a different section. And you see the brushes have hotkeys as well. What is D? See, I think D is a free hotkey. All right. So if you want to add something to that D key, like let's say, let's go here to options. And we can add this to quick favorites. This is a good one. Delay viewport update. Now, usually I will want this up top. Okay. So later on, I'm just going to, maybe I'll change this, but it's no big deal right now. Delay viewport updates. is going to help with your lag. It's going to reduce the lag because when you turn it on, you know, probably won't show right now, but it's going to like create some type of clipping effect. But if you see that, don't worry about it. It's just doing its job. Just trying to make the viewport a little more, um, movable. But yeah, that's pretty much the Q key.